Another mystery buried deep in the hills of eastern Washington keeps resurfacing. A bottomless pit said to be a pathway to the paranormal. Como Four's Denise Whitaker heads east in search of the hole. A cunningly positioned camera delves into the enigmatic depths of Mel's Hole, nestled within the picturesque Manistash Ridge, west of Ellensburg, Washington. Red Elk, a Native American shaman or medicine man, tells me his dad first showed him the hole in 1961. Contrary to its appearance, this peculiar orifice is not a well, but rather served as a repository for Mel and previous landowners, harboring everything from discarded refuse to defunct appliances and worn-out tires. It's an underground base, a very small. Despite the ceaseless influx of detritus, the cavity remained eerily vacant, sparking Mel's curiosity about its concealed secrets. Even his faithful canine companions shied away from its vicinity, while cryptic messages flickered across his radio waves, hinting at a subterranean realm beyond his comprehension. The mystique surrounding Mel's hole captivated the imaginations of many, spawning myriad tales and conjectures that seized the public's attention. In 2017, a brave group of researchers embarked on a daring expedition to unveil the mysteries concealed within Mel's uncanny chasm. Armed with determination and resolve, they located the elusive cavity, only to be confronted with a revelation that defied comprehension. As their camera descended into the void, they beheld a sight that sent shivers down their spines and compelled them to hastily retreat, recognizing the imminent peril lurking within. Join us on a captivating journey to unravel the enigma of Mel's Hole. Explore the chronicles of intrepid researchers who ventured into the unknown in pursuit of elusive truths, driven by an unwavering conviction that answers lay buried within the depths awaiting discovery. A circular hole with a diameter of 9 feet 9 inches surrounds Mel's hole, creating a stunning sight. The wall is made of strong stone and gently falls about 15 feet before disappearing into the abyssal darkness below. This mysterious event is made even more interesting by the fact that Mel Waters and his wife like to put things in the pit, and their neighbors have been doing the same thing for years before Mel arrived. In fact, people in the area couldn't remember a time when the hole wasn't strangely there. The eerie silence that meets things falling into it is what confuses everyone who sees it. There are no echoes or any other sign of a bottom. Because she was interested and determined, Mel Waters set out to find out what was hidden behind this abysmal mystery. He planned a risky experiment because he loved fishing and had a lot of fishing lines. Putting a weight on the line and lowering it into the void, he was shocked when it kept going down and went all the way to a depth of 4,500 feet, the length of the reel, without hitting any solid ground. Even though this shocking news didn't stop Mel, she determinedly pulled it back replacing the weight with a roll of Lifesaver's candy and sent it falling back into the depths, hoping to find water at the unimaginable depths below. Even so, the Lifesavers stayed dry and unyielding when they got back to the surface, despite Mel's dreams. Mel didn't give up on his search. He connected spool after spool of fishing line and dove to depths of almost 10,000 feet without finding any sign of a bottom. Because he was so determined, he put out an amazing 80,000 feet of line, which is more than 15 miles, but the mysterious hole's secrets stayed firmly hidden. During his endless testing, Mel noticed something strange. His dog studiously avoided the mysterious opening. When they were forced to do something, they refused, as if they could feel a scary force inside. Interestingly, the area around the hole didn't seem to have any animals or bugs in it, even though birds were flying around it. Mel was interested in this strange event, so he asked his neighbors about how their dogs behaved near the hole. What they told him was very scary. As the conversation went on, one neighbor told a scary story. He told them that his dog had died not long ago, which made him say goodbye by throwing the dog's body down the strange abyss. He was shocked when a few days later he saw the same dog walking through the woods near the house. Its collar made it easy to recognize. Even though he called the dog, it wouldn't react. 
It was acting like it didn't know who its owner was, casting an eerie shadow over the situation. It looks like it might be a doorway to another world. That idea grew stronger as more and more strange stories came in, weaving through the fishing line and into the abyss. As Mel got more and more involved in this strange story, he realized he was in over his head and asked for help. In 1997, there was only one real place to talk about these kinds of oddities, Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell, which aired from the vast high desert of the great American Southwest. Since Art Bell's show is broadcast on hundreds of stations around the world and has 10 million loyal fans, they would be the best people to help Mel figure out what was going on. On February 21st, 1997, Mel contacted Art, which led to an interesting talk that made Mel's hole famous all around the world. Over the course of several shows, Mel slowly revealed more information about the strange void. People from all over the world gave good tips, like suggesting that lasers or radar be used for measuring, but the attention also had some bad effects. Because Mel told millions of people on the radio about this mysterious hole, they now knew all about its secrets. Mel's clues dropped by accident and gave away where the hole was. But when Mel went back to his house the day after the first show, he was shocked to see that the entrance was blocked. It wasn't just any blockade, the US military was behind it. The government learned about the hole and wanted to know all of its secrets. This turned Mel's study, which had been private at first, into a high-stakes game of intrigue. After the show on Friday night, Mel noticed that there were more helicopters flying around his land. And this continued all day the next day. He noticed that the hole seemed to have a strange effect on the area around it. Animals naturally stayed away from it, but plants grew like crazy. Radios close to it acted strangely, sending out static and picking up podcasts from faraway places. Then, one terrible day, Mel's radio started playing what he called old-time music. He was desperately trying to change the station when he came across a broadcast of a baseball game. He watched as a first baseman's play unfolded until he realized the game had happened in 1967, 30 years ago. During Art's first hour-long talk with Mel, Mel told Art that he was in Ellensburg, which is where he had made the call. While Mel was on his way back to his property, he came across a large roadblock manned by armed military people. Signs that big machines were being brought in made things even more tense. Even though Mel had been told that there had been a plane crash on the land, she found no signs of it, no reports, no fires, and no smoke. Still, Mel was suddenly not allowed to go on his own land until the alleged crash was fully investigated. When he asked to talk to the person in charge, someone dressed as a citizen gave him a scary message. Mel might not own the land anymore. There were heavy hints that if he didn't obey, they would find a secret drug lab on the property, which cast a shadow of doubt over Mel's once calm world. Mel thought about defying the man in charge by telling the press about his situation, but the man in charge waved him off and said that no one would believe him. But he had no idea that Art Bell and his loyal fans would really listen to what Mel had to say. A few days later, Art called Mel to find out what was going on. Mel told him an amazing story. A neighbor had seen a dark beam coming from the hole and going through the clouds. It was a darkness that had never been seen before. Now, I want to make it clear that Mel did not personally see this happen. But Art Bell and many other callers said that this part of Washington was famous for UFO reports, mysterious disappearances, and many other strange things that happened. People who called in with their own ideas said they thought the hole might be where ley lines meet, opening a way to other worlds, or even time itself. They said that anything thrown into its depths just disappeared, building up in a strange heap in a different world, a place where lost things, animals in bad shape, and maybe even souls vanished. One of the many ideas that were put forward was that the hole might be a tunnel that leads to the supposedly hollow earth. This would be like a subway connecting different worlds. As the rumors kept coming in, Art Bell, who wasn't allowed to go on Mel's land, tried to get more information from people in the area, digging deeper into the maze of mysteries that surrounded Mel's hole. 
An old neighbor, maybe feeling the weight of the years that have passed, told a teaser. The mysterious hole used to be surrounded by stone columns. People in the crowd warned Mel right away about the risks of telling his story on the radio. Since the government might be listening in, such revelations could have bad results that Mel didn't expect. As the show was ending, Mel promised to come back with more news. When the planned day came, however, he was noticeably missing, and his phone kept ringing. An investigative news team went to Ellensburg to find the truth, but they couldn't find the rumored hole. But as they looked around the area, they found a lot of military plans and information that definitely suggested the military had been or is still present in the area. Three years later, Mel said he was offered $3 million a year to rent out his property, but there was one big catch. He had to sign a non-disclosure deal, leave the country right away, and never come back. Mel took up the offer and moved to Australia for two years, drawn by the promise of financial security. That being said, though, the heart wants what it wants, and Mel found himself longing for his family. Even though people told him not to, he bravely decided to sneak back into the U.S. for a visit, ignoring the dark clouds of secret and suspicion that hung over his past. Mel called Art Bell while he was there and promised to finally tell the truth on the radio. To everyone's surprise, though, he didn't show up on the radio. When asked about his absence, Mel told a strange story. The day he was supposed to show up, he got into a fight on the bus on his way to see his nephew. After the police got involved, there was a mad rush to get on a different bus. However, as if fate were determined to throw another surprise, Mel had a blackout. She woke up 12 days later in San Francisco, lost and confused. His things were gone, his arm hurt, and when he looked closer, he saw needle marks and tape remains from an IV. As he slowly came to, he tasted blood in his mouth and realized the terrifying fact that he was missing his back teeth. Things didn't stop being strange, though. Mel never got back to his land because he was in a lot of trouble with the law. The government took over his land for two years because they said he built things and put up power lines, septic tanks, and paved roads that weren't legal, even though he hadn't done any of those things. Mel lost everything, even though he begged not to. His life's work was taken away from him. To make things even worse, he found that his bank account had been emptied just days after contacting Art's show, leaving him completely broke. Even though doubters call in to say it's all a fake, Art Bell, the master storyteller, decides to give Mel a chance to tell his story. In the middle of all the doubt, Art drops a tempting clue. A TV crew went into the area to look for the elusive hole but couldn't find it. Instead, they came across signs of major military action, which added to the mystery of an already confusing story. To add to the mystery, the no-flea zone mysteriously grows to cover the same area, and the Terra server, a well-known Google Earth mapping site, shows the whole area as eerily blacked out which is supported by other sources. Some callers think Mel might have made up the blacked out map area after finding it by accident, but this idea doesn't hold up under closer inspection. The Terra server launched six months after Mel's first call, so he couldn't have known about it before. But just when it seems like the plot is getting too complicated to follow, a twist appears. A Native American tribe contacts Mel and invites him to Nevada to help them explore another hole that seems to have no bottom. Mel starts this new trip with the tribe's help, but he doesn't make it all the way there. Still, stories from Native America, the Bosque, and the mysterious pit are talked about. Even though they were talking in a very vague way, they both agreed that everything was fine, and that Mel was not working for the typical suspects like CNN, the FBI, or the CIA. As the story goes on, it becomes clearer that the mysteries surrounding Mel's hole are only a small part of a much bigger puzzle that includes both myth and fact. Mel leaves and starts a trip to find out for herself what's down in the mysterious hole. Even though he digs deeper, the main question stays the same. What's below the surface? This second hole is not on an Indian reservation like the first one. Instead, 
It is on public land that the Bosques, an ethnic group with roots in the area between France and Spain, use. The Bosques have lived in Nevada since the middle of the 1800s and used the land to raise sheep. The Bosques say that this hole has been there forever and is regarded as a holy place for at least 200 years. Along with Mel's Hole, which is just over nine feet wide, this one looks very different. Mel's Hole has a stone retaining wall, but this one has a strong metal collar whose shiny surface seems to go on forever. But what really makes this hole stand out is the strange warmth it gives off, a warmth that wraps around anyone who comes close. It's not just any metal collar, though. It's unique. Mel drops a tool on it by accident, and when it hits, there is a strange quiet. There are no sounds or vibrations, just an empty space that can't be explained. With a mix of fear and interest, Mel and the Bosques started a series of risky experiments to find out what was going on inside the hole. For the first test, they put a bucket of ice down the hole until it was about 1,000 feet deep, leaving some ice on the top as a control. As the ice on the top melted, they eagerly went to get the bucket, but to their surprise, the ice inside stayed solid, going against all the rules of nature. What was even stranger was that it had changed. It was no longer cold to the touch, and it stayed dry, with a feel like big chunks of salt. They tried to melt it over an open flame because they were interested in this strange event. To their surprise, it caught fire, and the flames stayed there for months. Sending different amounts of ice down the hole was used in later tests to get to the bottom of this mystery. Surprisingly, the ice melted as planned about two-thirds of the time. But one-third of the time it changed in a way that was impossible to understand. As the search for information went on, one brave Bosque offered to go down into the hole. It didn't take long for everyone to agree that this was not a good idea. Instead of using a more traditional method, they chose to send a sheep down. It was impossible to imagine how amazing the results of this brave plan would be. Get ready for what's coming next. The sheep knew something strange was about to happen, so they fought back fiercely as the crate they were in was dropped 1,000 feet. Suddenly the fall stopped, and there was a strange humming sound that filled the air. After leaving the sheep in its underground home for 30 minutes, they finally lifted it back up, expecting to find it the same. But when they looked more closely, they saw something horrifying. The once alive sheep was now lying dead. The experience shocked and amazed them, making them feel like they were in a holy state. The Bosque, who were very good at butchering, quickly went from being amazed to taking action. They didn't spend any time and quickly performed an autopsy on the mysterious sheep. As they looked more closely at the animal's remains, they found something shocking. It looked like the sheep had been cooked from the inside out. The biggest thing that stood out was the huge growth that filled most of its body. Reality then takes a strange turn when the growth showed signs of life and started to move, which was very scary. You did hear that, right? They decided to cut open the tumor in order to figure out what this strange finding meant. What they found inside shocked them to their core. Inside the growth, they found what Mel could only describe as a fetal seal. Picture this, a thing that looked like a baby seal and was attached to the tumor by an umbilical tube. Its eyes looked a lot like human eyes. As they looked at this thing that looked like a seal, it crawled to the edge of the table and gave off a strong ozone smell. The feel of its slippery skin sent chills down their spines. The men and the creature looked at each other in a strange way for about two hours, exchanging looks of interest and wonder. Finally, the seal thing looked at the men one last time, then gracefully jumped into the unknown depths of the hole and disappeared. Before Mel's trip to Nevada, he was told he only had six months to live because he had severe esophageal cancer. Still, after this out-of-this-world experience, Mel suddenly got better from cancer. He was sure that the magical seal was the key to his unnatural recovery. 
Mel had an event that changed him in a way that could not be explained. As the show was coming to a close, a strong warning went out over the airwaves. The road that led to Mel's land looked dangerous, but people were told to stay away from it. Going past that point could have bad results, like going missing into the unknown and being lost forever in the mysterious secrets that surrounded Mel's hole. After a few months, Mel triumphantly returned to coast to coast, bringing with him the results of the strange ice tests. One person in the Bosque didn't know what strange things would happen when they took the melting ice to their house to stay warm. He had no idea that a strange series of events would happen. The ice that had been on fire for months took moisture from the air, so the house was always dry. Its occupant had constantly dry skin and an insatiable thirst, and even hot water took on strange properties and mysteriously turned into steam in the stove's depths. Then something unexpected happened. The stove crashed through the floor of the hut and into the ground below, still warm. As a practical matter, the confused owner fixed the floor and started to use the strange hole for heat. But this temporary fix took a strange turn a few weeks later, when the whole cabin fell apart. After the event, the confused owner went to stay with his brother, but when he came back a month later, he saw something even stranger. The stove was five feet below the ground where it used to be on the ground. It's crazy that the stove created a new hole with no bottom without meaning to. Its surface is perfectly smooth. Attempts to get the stove back were unsuccessful until a huge crane came along and successfully extracted the confusing appliance from the depths below. The Bosque people said they had seen the entity, the magical seal found in the hole, which added another layer to the mystery. The special seal was seen as a good thing, so it took on a spiritual meaning for the Bosque and helped them connect deeply with the strange forces at work. Birds of bright colors that didn't seem to be hurt by shots started flying around the hole. This was an odd reaction to what could only be called a spiritual experience. With their unique point of view, the Bosque saw the birds as a direct reaction to what they saw. The shocking news was that they said the magical seal talked to them through a system of beeps and clicks over the radio, which they said they understood. They thought that the creature spoke to them and warned them about how dangerous the ice was stressing how terrible things could get if it got into the wrong hands. As always, Art wanted proof of this contact, and the Bosque did not let him down. They had recorded it all. Over the next few hours, many ideas were put forward, each one adding more mystery to an already confusing story. Art finally got Mel to come back to the show by telling him he would bring records, photos, videos, and any other proof he could find. Mel agrees to go on the trip back to Nevada, but there is a strange silence after the call ends. Even though Art tries to call Mel, he doesn't answer, and the line finally goes dead. There are five years that have passed since the beginning of Mel's whole story, which leaves a lot of questions. Mel's Hole is one of Art Bell's most famous moments, and people all over the world are drawn to its mysterious beauty. But how much of this story can we be sure of? First, let's talk about where the hole is. TerraServer blocked that part of Washington, but Google Earth showed it again. It's likely that if the military really took over the land, they would have hidden the hole. Even after years of looking, many possible places came to light. One on Google Maps stood out, so someone went to the site and wrote down what they saw. Mel talked about two old buildings on the property during one of his calls. One of them finally fell down in the snow. This statement fits perfectly with what was found. Also, there's an interesting feature on the property, a hole about nine feet wide with a stone wall around it, just like Mel said. A lot of people were talking about this finding online, but people were less excited when they saw that the hole was actually an old well with a clear bottom. A lot of people on the internet say they've found Mel's hole, but for now, we don't know for sure. Many people, both fans and doubters, are still interested in the mystery, and Mel's Hole is still an intriguing puzzle that needs to be solved. Let's look into Mel, 
who is just as complicated as the secret that surrounds him. There is no record of a male or Melvin Waters living in the area, which has led some to think that he used a fake name to hide his identity. The story doesn't seem very real because there are no pictures. Art always asks Mel for visual proof, but Mel says he forgets to bring them with him, which doesn't make sense. At another time, he says that cameras near the hole don't work because of interference. Or he says he has pictures and records, but can't get them right away. He says he'll send them when he can. To be fair to Mel, he never makes money from anything. It would have made him a lot of money to sell t-shirts, books, fake photos, or anything else that people would have thought was cool. People often say that Mel's story got stranger and stranger until he couldn't handle it anymore, which caused him to quit the show. It took him five years, though, to stay true to the facts, and Art Bell tried many times to trick him, but failed. Still, the hole itself is geologically unlikely, unless it's a hole that goes to another world. A hole that's many miles deep would be unstable and fall apart, right? Unless that's it. But the truth is still hard to find. And if people believe in Mel's hole, Art Bell might not have been one of them. Still, as a performer, he knew that this was the kind of story that people like to hear, a tale that people still talk about today, 30 years later. Fans of the supernatural and people who were interested in the story of Mel's Hole came together in 2017 with GoPro cameras, lights, and strings ready to catch a glimpse of this famous abyss. By chance, they found locations in a Reddit post that led them to a random farm that might be connected to Mel's Hole. When they got to the spot, they were shocked by how deep the chasm was, making it impossible for them to understand. They couldn't figure out where the bottom was, so they threw rocks in, which added to the mystery of this famous hole. The team used binoculars to see a strange person watching them from afar, but they had to leave quickly before they could fully look over the footage from their cameras. The finding of a beetle deep in the hole was a symbolic moment that showed how the unknown can hold people's attention for a long time. The expedition did more than just solve the puzzle of Mel's hole. They also looked into deeper meanings and thought about how people are naturally interested in the unknown. Their journey, which was full of themes of exploration, curiosity, and the never-ending search for mystery, was a metaphor for people's eternal quest to find the secrets that lie deep in the world.